Hello, sweet sisters. Thought it would be good to dial in and see if we could find some, um, some good energy. I don't know about you, but it's been a rough few days. Um, let me give it just a moment. Just a moment. So I want to say hello, sweet sisters. A lot to share with you here today. I'm, I'm sending you all much love and many good wishes today. I know it's been a really rough time. Um, I've even been struggling myself. I had a long drive yesterday. Hello, everybody. Um, so good to see you. So interestingly enough, um, first of all, I want to hold everybody in prayers this this week. It's been a very difficult time for many people in the country and around the world. I don't know. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how are you all doing today? Where are you? With a 1 being um, Kim, the day's feeling lousy, and I really don't want to be here. Um, and 10 being, I'm feeling like a rock star. Um, hello, sweet sister. Chrissy, good to see you. Um, I started my day off pretty rough, so um, let me pick up where I left off. Uh, a lot of interesting things have happened. Um, good to see you, Carla. So I ended up doing the videos this week when I was in D.C. to simply bring you all along on the journey. Um, I'm glad to hear that, Cindy. Um, I... Uh, I never meant for a video, it got quite a bit of views, and I, some of you are really new, so I wanna say welcome to all of you. This particular very emotional, Christy, I understand. I had a, a tough time here this morning. Hello, sweet Bonnie. All right, so um, let me, when I left yesterday, DC, I, you know, the last video I did was in the gray. Hello, Dan from Utah, glad to have you there. Um, I want you to know what I walked out to. Um, I walked out and on my doorstep there in DC, Heather, I'm sending you prayers. You're not alone, okay? Um, part of why I'm still doing this particular broadcast is because I was struggling this morning myself. It took me quite a few hours to pull myself out of it. Um, but I felt like maybe we all needed something. So I walked out of my Airbnb Thursday morning to leave DC and I walked out and there was a brick on my doorstep and there was a note that says, shame, shame, shame. Well, imagine how I felt knowing that there was a brick on the doorstep. My first thought, my first thought of course was fear because it was obvious that somebody, hello from the Netherlands, hello Maureen, I have lots of dear friends, dear sweet sisters from the Netherlands. Imagine how I felt when I saw the brick. Um, scared, of course. Um, it was very scary at that moment, but then as soon as the, as soon as the fear hit, sadness hit. And hello, Todd. Good to see you, dear. Um, so I want to welcome you all. Um, I talk a lot to the women on my Facebook page because that was usually who was on there, but I want to welcome you all. We all need a shot of goodness these days. Um, but when I, when I saw the brick and the note, um, I had a couple of choices in that moment. I could have gone straight down to the fear. So did I want to go ahead and pack my stuff and get out? Yes. Hello, Juanita. Um, but then I felt sadness and then I prayed. I prayed for the individual who left it there. I had heard the voices outside of my door and enough to the point where I had propped some things up to the door and had hung out um, in, a, in, a, in the bedroom away from everything because I wasn't sure what was going to unfold that night. Um, I prayed for the person who put the brick. I prayed for the assumptions that they made that I wasn't there for something that was trying to be of good intent. I prayed for the sadness and for the hurt that so many people were feeling. You know, when I did that broadcast, it was only within one hour after the chaos erupted over there at the Capitol. And so I was not aware of all the things that had happened. Um, and I'm still learning. Um, please understand that I don't watch the news. I have not watched the television news in 10 years. Um, for many of you that are new here, some of you already know my story, um, but I lost everything when I ten, over 10 years ago. So I was bankrupt personally and professionally. Um, I had lost a marriage. Hello, blessings to you too, Julie. Thank you. And so I lost everything then, and the, I almost didn't make it through that dark time. Um, I talk about that in my book, Your Lion Inside, and, and, and I almost didn't make it through it. And one of the things I had to do then in order to make it through that very tough time, I know many of you have been through tough times in your life, um, I had to detach from the news because at that moment I learned that the news was stoked for fear and for angst and to keep us depressed and scared. And I was barely making it myself. So I haven't watched the news in 10 years. So literally I read a little bit of the news in the morning and at night so I stay in tune with what's going on. Um, prayers from Minnesota, thank you Gloria. But I, was all, I made a very conscious choice many years ago. 
And so, and I also don't watch much TV. So you're talking to someone who um, I, you know, I, I tap dance on social media so that I can be of much upliftment and support. So let me know if there is any specific prayer requests. Um, but there were some interesting observations this week. There's a lot of hurt. There was a lot of hurt. Um, a lot of sadness. And I know, Gail, I know. And um, so how, how many of you have been feeling all these conflicting emotions? So as of this morning, it, what was most difficult, I drove home, it about, over, took me over eight hours yesterday. And of course it ended up with rain and some sleet. And um, so I was like, of course, that, that would be the end of the day. And I was, I was so saddened, um, not by so much, I was saddened by all the, all the violence and all the chaos. I was saddened by the reaction and the blame. Um, I was saddened because I know about some of the human trafficking issues that are tied to some of the people that were there. And I feel like it's a betrayal of the public trust. And that um, I've always felt leadership is very sacred. And so this morning, I, um, you know, being that I've done some work with, with child and human trafficking, I called one of the people uh, I, who has been in this a long time and I said, how do you do it? How do you, you know, I have a tremendous amount of faith, but how do you walk through the world now knowing that you have some of this, you have this deep evil that's there and it appears that some of that evil won. Um, time will tell. And what do you, will they be held accountable? And I, I was struggling when this one woman who has been saving women out of trafficking and children out of trafficking for a long time. Um, I'm glad, thank you, Deborah. prayers to you as well, and prayers, to, um, and I'm so glad to see all of you, sweet sisters and my other guys that are on here. And um, she said something really important to me this morning that I wanted to pass along. She says, Kim, when you first start to discover the darkness and the deceit of, of people that we trusted and of systems that we've trusted, she says, it's like having a flashlight in the dark. And the more you get in there, you see that there's more and more in the dark that you don't want to see. And what people really often want to do is they want to turn off the flashlight. She said, don't turn off the flashlight, Kim. Because I was in tears. I mean, I was, um, I was having a hard time this morning. And um, I share this with you. You know, I've always tried to be very upbeat when I'm on. Um, but I've also tried to be very transparent with you and say that I'm never going to ask of you what I don't ask of myself. And she said, keep the flashlight on, Kim. She says, a lot of people don't want to see these things. And... You know, the more of us that have a flashlight, I know Sharon, uh, I'm not giving in yet. So that's why I wanted to jump on this broadcast and share that. I don't want to give in to that yet. She said, keep the flashlight on, Kim. She says, what you have to do is whatever's happening with the political world, it's like an ocean and you have to ride, she goes, you have to ride the wave. Um, there's hurt and there's hate. Um, Dan, I certainly, I, I, I'm not for hate. I certainly, it's hurt that I'm feeling heartbroken this morning. And um, she said, don't, you know, ride, learn to ride the waves of the ocean, um, both when it's calm and both when it's um, almost like a tsunami. She said, learn to ride the waves, but just keep the flashlight on. She said a lot more than that, but I'll be honest with you, I was so overwhelmed. I really couldn't take much more. All I could take was keep the flashlight on. And it's what I needed to hear at the moment. She said, um, just keep the flashlight on because the more people that have a flashlight on, the more the darkness is eradicated. She said, the darkness has thrived. This is to my fellow sister, Twain. So here's a woman who not only herself um, had experiences with Epstein, but also um, people in her family. I mean, so this is a woman who's front lines and here she is telling me someone who is relatively new in just the past year or two learning about these subjects. And here she is encouraging me the strength of these women are amazing. I see all the hearts out there. And um, keep the flashlight on. So I do believe that's what we're all being asked to do at this moment is to keep the flashlight on. You know, there were, I was shocked at um, the number of views for the video that I, that I had. I, uh, one of the women, one of my dear friends ended up sharing it. I had no idea it would go like it did. I think we're up to like 180,000 views. That was never my intent. My intent was to talk to the women who I've been building this relationship with all this time. Um, I, was, I was surprised by the reaction. I found a lot of people that were very supportive. I found a lot of people that were full of just hate and anger. Um, my grandmother used to call that piss and vinegar. <laughs> she used to say, what's made you so full of piss and vinegar this morning? <laughs> That's what she said. And I remember thinking that when, um, yeah, it is Carla, isn't it? I remember saying, and I, and I watching all the comments, um, 
Kim Prayer, sweet sister. Glad I'm so glad you're with me too, Kim. I want to send you all much love. Um, I don't. I'm not coming here with answers today. Um, I, I'm coming here with just one human being to another. Um, you know, coming back. I, I went. To, I got my COVID test. I'm away from everybody. I'm making sure everything is all safe. Um, I have something to say about that. That's been really hard too to to just see how we strip away our humanity in these micro moments. Um, we must find all the faith we can. You know, Dawn, one of the things I'm learning is that during this time, some of us, you know, we're really good and we're full of hope one day. I see you all. I'm sending you much love. And then the next day is really rough. And luckily, we seem to be that on opposite parts. So when we're up, we can lift up someone who is really down. And when we're down, someone who is up can lift us up. Can anybody relate to that? Um, because I had to call some people this morning and said, help me. Um, help me. Um, I, I, did, I couldn't get out of it. I mean, this took me a few hours. And um, so I don't know what, I don't know. I, I don't know any answers at this point, but here's what I do know. And that's what I keep going back to is whenever I'm stuck in a place that I don't know, I go back to what do I do know? What do I do? I do know this. I do know that goodness will eventually win. I do know that we are all connected. So for any of you, um, <laughs> piss and vinegar is a relatable one, Bonnie. You're so funny. I knew you'd love that. Um, I do know that we're all connected. Um, I don't know why the division has happened. And, you know, everybody says that they want it to be for Trump, and, and, and that's, it's all because of him. And yet we see everybody else who is putting it out there. It's really not about any of them. Um, I've been teaching systems thinking for 25 years, and I, that's about looking at the collective whole. And what I've learned with that is that it's not as simple as looking for a hero or looking for some, or someone or something to blame. It's never that simple. It's always more than that. And I don't believe in heroes. And I don't believe there's any single person or thing to blame. It's a, a confluence, a, a gathering of all of those things that are connecting. So what I do know is that it's not that simple. What I do know is that um, I have met a lot of wonderful people this week. I do know that I met some people that are really hurting. And I do know I met some people that were angry. And when I think about the individual who put the brick on my doorstep, believe me, I know that this brick could have gone through the window. I know that. Why didn't it that night? So of course, it frightened my family. But see, when I went there to DC, um, I went there with an armor of protection around me. That's one of the things that I think that many of us are forgetting. Um, trust in God, not a man, I agree. Um, I'm troubled because I follow a patriot and he's not been hurt and for, uh, we need to pray for them all. You're right, Gloria, we need to pray for them all. What I, what I want to remind us all of is what I do know is that we cannot take the fact that when we walk through the world, it is important every single day and every single night, and perhaps even more than that, is to walk through the world with protection. You see, I knew I was going into a dark place. That's why I wanted to go, actually, because I, I wanted to bring that light. And yet it was interesting to see so many people slinging, slinging words and things to me that I was like, wow, they don't even know me. How quickly do we assume the worst of people? It's something I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with. How quickly do we assume the worst? And what's going to be so challenging about the time that we're with? Um, I'm glad you found it too, sweet sister Annette. I'm glad. And listen, I'm bringing as much as I have today. Um, I ask you all if you'd please send me some, some too. Um, why do we assume the worst for everyone? And what's so challenging is as, the, as things unfold, we need to go through a peaceful transition now. I mean, um, I've always, I've always been about uh, a peaceful transition. I've never been about violence, whether it was back in the spring or whether it was now. Um, some people that saw the video later thought I was making some things up and they didn't realize I had recorded this literally right after I had been. So I had not even seen other parts. I'd only seen, heard a few reports of the news when I was driving. Um, why do we assume the worst? And so I've been asking myself, you know, when we go through and we find that people are betraying us, do we then ask, is everybody betraying us? I have to ask myself because how many how many of you have had yourself on um, hyper vigilance alert, like waiting for someone to hurt you, or waiting for the world to let you down, or waiting for disappointment to take over? Can anybody relate to that? Well, you know when we when we get into that hyper vigilant state, and I've lived there. I mean, I've shared this with you all. I see I see the heart, so I know some of you've been there. Um, thank you, Barbara. Um, I know what it's like to live in that hyper vigilant state, and. Uh, it breaks you down, it breaks down your health, it breaks down your nervous system. And um, I, I think it's important for us all to start to ask, what do we believe about humanity? 
And so while I'm disappointed right now and while I am still deeply committed to, to bringing light to the corruption, I'm not giving up on that. I also know that all of us, even those that are caught up in the evil web, um, mom used to say, you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Sherry, that's a great phrase, absolutely. Um, Aggie, I've prayed for my enemies. And Aggie, I do too. One of the things that I've learned about the darkness that has us in a grip right now, not only in the US, but around the, around the world, is um, many of those that are caught in the dark that we want so badly to be caught, um, that you don't realize the system that they've been birthed into. Um, these people have been born with evil from the time they're child. They have never known love. They have never known. Um, it's hard to trust when you've been hurt. You're absolutely right, Debbie. You're absolutely right. So the people who are, who are doing these things to us, um, can we find it at all to, to be able to say, yes, we want divine justice, and yes, we want to hold them accountable, and yes, we want to find a way to... to offer compassion and love because I have to tell you these cycles of abuse keep going over and over and the very people that I'm so angry and hurt about because that I know they're I know I've seen the evidence with my own eyes that they're involved with the child trafficking I, I've been told I know what they've lived through we've also been taught not been taught to see the divine in everyone Bonnie isn't that the truth isn't that the truth Luke beautiful intelligent young lady um, hon you get points for young <laughs> Um, I'll take whatever I can get today. So maybe we could all find a way. That's what I'm just simply going to say is perhaps we could all find a way. And how do we how do we try to see the goodness? Because even the people who are in the deepest of evil were also are also created. How do we have them come to uh, repent, see the light, whatever we want to say, wherever our world is? Uh, I don't know. Um, because I even go back and forth between being so angry and I want them hold accountable and then feeling so much sadness and hurt that these people have never even felt love. And that's what we're in the grips of. What do you say? So I brought the brick home. You know, I looked at it. When I walked out of the door, I have to tell you, when I saw the brick and the note, you know, it's very clear someone had been watching me. Someone had been watching me all that time. I wish they had approached me and talked to me because I would have wanted to, to, I would have wanted to hug them, but we're not allowed to do that right now, right? But that's what Southerners do. But I would have wanted to simply just be there and hold, um, hold space for them. You know, that's the thing that's most difficult right now. I talked about it in one of our previous book clubs. Um, the problem is they don't want to hear positive things. You're right, Aggie. Many of them don't. I saw plenty of piss and vinegar on the comments <laughs> from from um, the previous video, okay? And I was like, wow. So I simply sent them prayers. I simply said, I'm not going to respond to it with piss and vinegar. Um, instead, there are some of them that I even said, um, you know, please understand that I am fully protected in an aura of protection. That's what I walk through the world. The note said, um, shame, shame, shame. That's what the note said. That's all. It was enough to let me know they'd seen me and that they could have hurt me and they could have thrown the brick through the window. I know that. Um, I hope you made it home out of Washington. I certainly tried to, Aggie, dear. Um, but for the people who are slinging um, all, that, all that hate and, and anger, um, I understand that they're at a very hurtful place too and we're in a lot of uncertainty. So in the moment when I read it, you know, we first feel the hurt. That old saying that sticks and stones may break our bones, but words will never hurt us, that is a bunch of BS. I don't know about you, but <laughs> baloney, every word we sling out is like dropping a pebble in a pond and it just ripples through the world. I've been having dreams of angels with armor on. I love that, Tammy. I love that. And so in every moment when, when we have anger come at us, we can send the anger right back. But then what happens is we keep clashing and clashing and clashing. So when, when do we find the strength to stop slinging it and say, okay, I'm strong enough for you to sling it and I'm going to love you in that space? So what I told several of the, several of the guys and some of the women that were slinging it to me, um, I sent them prayers. Um, some of them, I told them, I said, um, <laughs> I'm going to print out your picture, which I am, and I'm going to put it on my wall, and I'm going to cover you with so much love and energy and light that your spirit is eventually going to squeal like a five-year-old boy being kissed by their favorite aunt. <laughs> um, that's, what am I gonna do? Uh, if, they're, if they've crossed paths with me, then maybe that's a moment. Maybe that's a moment to lift somebody up. 
um, lift somebody up. Aggie, I don't have the answer, sweet sister. I'm gonna let the process play out on its own. So at that moment, so all these people that were flooding my page, some of you, um, some of you are new here and I wanna say welcome. Um, thank you for your kind comments. I, I think that the more that we have positive energy, we can send that out and radiate that out in the world. For every mean comment that's sent to us, it's always a moment of choice, isn't it? It's a moment of choice. And so for so many of us that have learned these dark things, has evil won? I always will keep the faith. My name is Kimberly Faith. That is my birth name. I dropped my last names. Um, heap those coals of love, girlfriend. Bonnie, you're so funny. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I, you know, I made a commitment a long time ago in my 20s I, when I watched how everybody just seemed to, seemed to be sport to just tear people down. And I was like, what is this about? And one of the life rules that I made, my first, my, made for myself was I, I, I was going to build people up, not tear them down. And so whenever people would come in my world wanting to tear other people down, um, it was hard to stick to sometimes because, uh, you know, ill-meaning people like, you know, like camaraderie. Um, I would say, I'm not going to join that. I'll be glad to help talk, have you two talk with each other, but I'm not going to tear them down. I, I won't, I'm not going to do that with you. Um, oh, Chrissy, one of my daughter's middle name is Faith. How awesome is that? Um, I did, Aggie, have a brick at my door with a letter. But please understand that when I saw that, folks, okay, so I walked out of my door on Thursday morning and that's what was sitting there with a brick with this note. And, um, and I had a choice whether to be scared. I, was, I certainly felt fearful and said, get me the hell out of this town. Um, and then mostly I felt compassion. And I prayed for the person or people who left that there. I prayed that um, whatever sadness and heart hurt they were feeling, that it would be broken. I prayed for their prosperity, I prayed for their abundance, I prayed for their health. I wanted them to know and feel the love. You know, we don't have to even see the people to know because that will radiate. We're all connected. I don't understand how, but I just know that to be true. Use that brick as a stand for your Bible, Dan. I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that. So um, what goes around comes around. You know what, Maria, what's funny is I actually said that to a few people that were slinging hash. I said, please understand, um, I am fully protected. And if whatever digital daggers you're sending my way, it's going to bounce back to you. <laughs> That's, that's it. You're going to do it. And I have to tell you, a few years ago when I first started to get on um, Facebook and things like that, I, because I had been through that very difficult time in my life, I'm, now all of you, I want you to just drink in the goodness and the hearts and the love that's in this session right now. I want you to just breathe it in. Drink it in because I can feel that some people may need an extra dose of that. I know I certainly did. But when, when I started to get on social media a few years ago and I had people start to hash at me and, and send me piss and vinegar, it used to shut me down. I had been through such a difficult time that it was literally all I could do. As we were walking back to the hotel, a black woman drove by and shouted at us. And I, I thought, she doesn't even care to know who was. You know, that, you're right. Let us each get to know each other and care even more, Todd. Absolutely. And I think that is going to be, I believe that love is the most powerful force in the universe. You remind me of my wonderful mother-in-law, <laughs> Heather. I love that. And my daughter is, um, my daughter uh, shares um, some names with you there. Um, may, love's going to be the only thing that breaks this. That is the only thing that breaks this. I know that for a fact. Um, that's the only thing that we have. And so I ask each of you, whatever, wherever you are in the world, because I, I have a global audience, you know, when people started to hash at me, I told you years ago, it used to shut me down and I couldn't shine anymore. I literally shied away because I was scared. I was scared of, um, I, I couldn't be torn down anymore. I was worn out. I was scared of, of the women who would, who would say hateful things and I was especially scared of the men who didn't realize how much their voice, their loud voices would be hard and how much it would shut me down. And, um, and so it took me a while to have be brave enough to even get here today. So imagine, uh, if you take a look at that video that I posted, um, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the gray sweatshirt when I was sharing what happened, you know, what I saw at the Capitol. I mean, there are a thousand, there's a thousand at least comments and how, some of those are quite negative. And, and if I was as weak as I was then, I see you all sending, Good hugs and that I'm sending them your way. If I was as weak as I was then, um, I wouldn't have made it through it. Um, but everyone I saw, I just simply said, how can I send back love? How can I send back love? And so maybe we each can do that. 
I believe that love's going to be the only thing that breaks us through whatever it is we're going through. So, this feels much better than where I started this morning. So I hope you can just drink in some hope. Um, you know, what's so funny is some people automatically are accusing me of trying to be part of this cover up and, you know, I mean, woo, talk about, talk about, talk about how much we misunderstand each other. Is it possible that we could simply hold space with someone else and, and ask where they were? Because you know what's so interesting is that four years ago, um, I was so mad that Trump was president as well. For a solid two years, I couldn't even hardly speak to anybody who was a Trump supporter. Um, I'm in the Southeast, so now don't go start slinging because I had plenty of Trump supporters that were mad at me for not saying I was a Trump supporter, so there's no winning. <laughs> there's no winning and I'm giving up on that. Um, but I was so mad I couldn't see straight. Um, Karen, I love your message. Karen, I'm sending you much love, dear. Much love because we all need each other on this one. And um, hate breeds hate. Tom, you are so right about that. Um, how can we come together? You know, we all need, I don't, I don't know how it's going to happen. I think each one of us have a piece of wherever we are in the world and it's going to be to break the gridlock. Um, so let's break the gridlock. Maybe we could commit to that. Maybe that could be a hashtag, break the gridlock. Maybe the other hashtag could be love more. I don't know. Um, I'm going to, to watch things unfold and I'm going to simply do what I can do in the moment to bring as much kindness as I can. Um, anybody who wants to just simply accuse me uh, of not being real, well, I can't help that. You know what's funny is um, one of the things I learned about walking in your space and living your purpose, that was part of why I stopped watching the news and part of why I don't watch TV, folks. Um, I, I watch less than two hours of TV in an entire week because one of the things that I learned um, in that very dark time in my life is that if I spent so much time watching TV, I was living someone else's life and not living mine. And um, so, so I was very careful. I was very, um, I was very careful. So, folks, I'm not, I'm not going into all the political stuff. I'm just simply saying, wherever we are, if you are here and crossing my path, it's going to be for a reason. It's either because you need an extra dose of, um, of hope. It's either you want to support each other. Um, maybe we can give each, give each other some kind of a virtual hug. Uh, maybe I have a lot of international people on this page and we can just simply support each other. I don't have any answers yet. I came here today because I was heartbroken because I wanted you to know what the rest of the story was. I came here to let you know that I too was feeling defeated this morning and wanted to give up. And I've been finding my courage one moment at a time. May we each find a flashlight. Go find a flashlight, folks. <laughs> Keep the faith, sweet sisters. What we're going through right now, everything's gonna be fine, absolutely. Um, Aggie, I don't know the answer to that, and I'm not going to get into all that. Um, I don't understand the dynamics. You know what I've realized is with everything that's going on, it's like each one of us have been cast into some other people's character, their storybook. Each one of us are in the middle of a storybook that has been written and played out by somebody else. I don't even pretend to understand what's happening on both sides, okay? Sharon, I feel much better. You're most welcome, dear one. You're most welcome. When we finish here, I'll put fresh batteries in my flashlight. I will never let it fail me. Ah, Dan, I love to hear that. Um, I'm going to have a flashlight handy just to remind me. Um, have a flashlight. Don't turn off the flashlight. And so this morning when I was feeling so down and so defeated, I um, I could feel the darkness. You know in the darkness you can feel it descending? You can feel the darkness just start to put, it's like a cloak comes over you and you can't see light anymore. And the deeper it gets, the less light you can see and you can just go down and down and down. Anyone relate to that? So um, when you feel that, we have a couple of choices. We can keep spinning. Um, we can eat chocolate, <laughs> which is sometimes my problem when I'm upset. Um, or we can stop the spin. And the only way I knew to stop the spin today, let your light shine. Chrissy, you know what's interesting about that is one of the women who was born into the system and has seen some of the darkest stuff that she could see, she said that she was taught a song when she was three or four years old of this little light of mine. And she said that little song when she was when she was then cast into the very dark system, okay, a dark system, I'm not going to get into that. She said it was singing that song, This Little Light of Mine. That as a child, it was only singing that tiny song that kept her strong and now is why she is strong enough to be trying to take down the system, This Little Light of Mine. So maybe we can each have a flashlight out and just simply share This Little Light of Mine. 
And I want to remind you all too, is um, please don't, don't underestimate what kind of impact you could make. Um, maybe you can call somebody that you haven't heard from in a long time and, and just say, how are you? You know, the way, because I could feel myself descending into a darkness. And I, don't, I was descending into darkness. My husband and I were having words. Um, I was in a bad place this morning. I'm sending all hearts. See you too, Sonia. I haven't seen you in a while, dear sweet sister. Um, I, heard, I said, how can I, you know, in my darkest time 10 years ago, one of the things that I learned was the minute I'm going downhill in a very bad place, the, one of the things that got me out was who else can I lift up? Who else can I lift up? And so I called two people that I had not heard from and met long time and wished them Happy New Year. That started me to bring myself on the spin back up. I didn't think I would talk to any online today, I'll be honest with you, because I was slam worn out. So I'm going to, to wrap this one up. Um, I just simply, I, I felt that maybe some of you were feeling the same thing. I wanted you to know that you're not alone. I want to thank you, my sweet sister, Twain, for reminding me to turn on the light. Keep the flashlight on. Keep the flashlight on, my sweet sisters, and to all the, the gentlemen who have gathered here. Sending you all much love, much light. I'm going to turn on my flashlight. Love to you all.